New Life. Happy Thursday morning. Thank you for joining us for devotions. Hey, I want to let you know about something we're doing over the next few weeks that's a wonderful kind of Christmas outreach opportunity for you to be involved with. On our, both our Dublin and our Alamo campus, from 10 to 12, you can swing by to pick up some small bags that will be used for collecting items for reaching out and loving our foster care community. You can register with a small boy or a small girl, collect those items through the week, and then bring them back over the next few weekends as a chance for us to share a little bit of love of Christ with some people in some need. Would you join me in letting this be an incredible outreach and blessing to our community? Hey, let's hop into today's devotions. Potentially you're like me and the fear of the unknown or the thought of the unknown creates some fear for you. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, I like surprises. I just don't like being uncertain. In fact, it goes so deep that lightly I have some fears about heaven. I have some fears of how it all works and will Becky be my wife and dynamics with my kids and dynamics that way, family who will be there, my mom and kind of other family, how this all unfolds. And because of that, it honestly has created a, a lot of unrest. And I've had to settle my mind to this one thought. If I get to heaven and Jesus is there, that's enough. Did you hear that? Like, if there's nothing else, like if I just get to heaven and it's just me and Jesus, that's enough. Yeah, well, let's put it a little farther. I have a buddy of mine, great friend. He has a pretty unique childhood story. He ultimately would go through a divorce of his parents that would leave some pain, but before that ever showed up, he ultimately was adopted, and there was a, some birth parents that ultimately um, kind of released him, and so there were some pressures of potentially feelings of being unwanted and some things that way. As life has gone on, there's been some levels of rejection from that family, only to later find out that his birth dad potentially had no knowledge of his existence and has since passed away, and, and I've watched that really shape him. I have thought of how painful that can be. And yet his adoptive parents have been incredible. Don't get me wrong, they've not been perfect by any means, but they've both been incredibly generous and, and blessed to me. I've watched him develop a love for his um, adoptive parents, unbelievable. I've watched him extend grace in circumstance. And I've had to roughly get to the place that I don't fully understand how he came into this world and parent dynamics and all of that, but I do know this that my life has been dramatically impacted even though he's gone through a lot of struggle because of the impact he's made in me. His attitude's been unbelievable. It's kind of this way that if his parents for no other reason than brought him into this earth, he's learned to be grateful for them for that alone. His adoptive parents weren't perfect, but he does realize that they welcomed him into their home and for that reason, he's loved him, and that's been enough. And from this, somehow, there's been this imagery or understanding of who God is and how he's brought him in, and this an overwhelming circumstance that God's kind of adopted us into this family. And in his statement is, if I've gone through all of this pain and all of this struggle for no other reason than to find Jesus, then he's okay with that. And to be honest, I don't know that I could do what he's done. I don't know that I could go through all the struggle or the hardship. But what I do know is that Jesus is enough. In Psalms 23, a passage that many of you potentially know, you might have recited it when you went to church or before a sports game. You potentially have heard it used online or in different places. You might not know the whole kind of background or the story of it, but you somehow know a little bit of it. But it was written when life was far from easy for someone, and it has some powerful statements. Can I read it for us today? It begins with this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. I mean, just stop right there. It begins with this idea that God, your shepherd, your Lord, you're in control, and because of that, I have no other needs, no other wants. You are enough. Please understand it didn't give the circumstances to how that sheep got into the field. It didn't give the circumstance to how the shepherd was brought in. It didn't give the seeds because all the other sheep liked them. It didn't explain because their coat was fluffier or fancier than anybody else's. It didn't say that they lived in the most perfect of environments or the weather was just right. No, no, it doesn't say any of that. It just says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, you are God. You are in control. And because of that, I have everything I need. Then it goes on. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. And then I love this line. He restores my soul. I, I think that's the challenge for me in my heaven, which is I so badly want my perfect memories of my childhood and everything to be restored. I, I, I want there to be heaven as somehow I would create it that my mom and dad or my mom and my dad and my kids are there and, and we're all at the perfect ages and interaction and everything smiles and smiles. But that's not how it says he restores. He doesn't restore the idea of what Ben wants, but he restores the very things that I can't fix. My soul. You restore my soul. You guide me in paths of righteousness. Why? For your name's sake, not for mine. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And he's saying this, that I am walking through hard times, but I don't have to be scared because you are enough. Please understand, it doesn't say that he just stays in green pastures by quiet waters. No, he walks through hardship. And even in those moments, God is enough. Then it would go on. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. I'm not alone. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table in, before my enemies, in the, excuse me, in the presence of my enemies. I mean, we don't want to think of this idea that we're going to go through hardship, but David finds himself in hardship. And even in this, he goes, God, even with enemies attacking me, the challenges of war, battle, my life on the line, you prepare a table. You're at work in ways I don't know to bring health and need and resources. And then it ends in a way kind of unique. It says, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. For surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why? Because God's doing what David wanted? Nope. Why? Because God made no hardship happen? Nope. Because God gave him all the answers to what life would be like, all of his life story was perfect in the way he came up because he knew how heaven was going to work out? Nope. But that he understood the Lord is enough. I don't know what you're facing today. I want you to hear this. The Lord's enough. You might be in a tough marriage circumstance. The Lord is enough. You might be dealing with some children that are going through some really difficult times and making life very, very hard for you. The Lord is enough. It's possible you're still single and you're wondering if somebody could ever come. The Lord is enough. You might be overwhelmed with financial circumstances and you have no hope in sight for how things are going to get better. The Lord is enough. You're in the middle of COVID and things just went back to purple and you're not sure if things are going to get better anytime soon. The Lord is enough. Politics went exactly how you wanted or not exactly how you wanted. The Lord is enough. By the way, isn't that incredible? You know, that matter what we face, God is enough. I hope you hear this, that today, choose to put the Lord as your shepherd. Choose to put Christ as that person in control and realize that everything else goes away. Let me pray for us. Dear Lord, today, we put everything else below you. We raise you up because we realize that when you're in control, when your ways are at work, that alone is okay. We know that you'll guard us. We know that you'll protect us. We know you'll provide for us. And we know that you love us. So today, Lord, we put you in your rightful place. For you are God and we are not. In your name, amen. Hey, guys, have a wonderful day. God bless you.